Welcome to the first episode of Write Your Own Shit. In this episode, I'll be writing a simple spinning wheel, animating the wheel, and getting the result. First of all, we need to draw an arc that starts from a specific angle and ends after a sweep angle. With basic mass, we know that we can get the sweep angle by dividing 360 by n. For the first arc, I'm assuming the start angle at 90 minus sweep angle over 2 plus 360 percentage 360 to be centered around the 90 degrees axis. Notice that the angles in the arc are counting clockwise. The arc number i will start at start angle plus sweep angle multiplied by i percentage 360. I'm always using percentage 360 to avoid any headache I don't know about. Now we need to get the edge points of the arc on the circle's border to be able to draw a line from the center to the arc edges, which makes us able to distinguish each arc from the others. So we have the first case if the angle of that line is less than 90. Uh, it's easy to know uh, as you can see y equals center dot y plus r sine theta and x uh, equals center dot x plus r cosine theta that's basic math if the angle is more than 90 and less than 180 we do the same but in the x-axis we subtract instead of adding because it's the same uh, as the last one but mirrored to the other direction uh, if the angle is more than two, 270 and less than 360 we only subtract our sine theta instead of adding it a similar concept to the last one when the angle is more than 180 and less than 270 it's a tricky one at this time y equals center dot y minus r cosine theta also x equals center dot x minus r sine theta so we mirrored the angles too cool we now know how to draw the arcs we know how to draw lines to surround the arcs now let's do the animation actually i wanted to create something great so i used laplace transform for this one if you don't know laplace don't worry we are not using it heavily i'll try and explain how it works okay we have the wheel we are supposed to push with some force called torque because it's a rotational movement also there is a friction which resists this force and it's the reason this wheel will stop eventually there is also some factor called j you don't need to know about now according to newton law we can say the force t minus the resisting force b theta dot which is uh, the angular velocity equals j theta double dots which is the angular acceleration cool now we need to know the theta which is the angular displacement which we are actually looking for we need to know at time t what is the displacement theta so to get theta we have to solve this equation which seems to be hard so using Laplace transform i can solve this one easily t of t becomes t of s and theta dot becomes s theta of s and theta double dots becomes s squared theta of s so solving this equation we get this result now we just need to reverse the result now we've got an equation with theta in the left hand side and t on the right hand side the other values are constants t of t may be a function but it's also a function of t so we have what we want now let's start coding I've written some boilerplate code for you like creating new custom view and creating a possibility object that has a title data and the text size as parameters then I added x and y coordinates of the center also the radius start angle and the sweep angle I added a pent for filling the arcs a pent for the borders and another one for the text written on the possibilities also I've drawn a novel to see how it looks
Now let's double the radius and see how it looks. Let's first draw an arc to see the process step by step. First, set the sweep angle for 120 flow. Go to the possibility. In the draw function, change the fill paint color, then draw an arc with the oval we created, start angle 0, sweep angle specified previously, false for the use center parameter, and the fill paint. Let's move the fill and stroke paths to the center so when we draw a line to any point, the line starts from the center. Before drawing a line, we need to find the point we are going to. We can find this using the math formula we created before. The first point we need to draw a line to it is the point on the starting of the arc. So the angle is a start angle. The second point is the end of the arc, which is start angle plus sweep angle. As we are drawing using the fill style, the whole area between the points and the path will be painted using the specified color. Also using the stroke paint, we draw some kind of border to the arc from X and Y to the specified point. Then we move to the second point without drawing a line since we don't need to draw a line between the two points. Now let's draw the two paths, each with its paint. Looks good, huh? What about deleting that ugly black oval? We still need to draw a text. We first save the canvas state so we undo the rotation we are going to make. Then we rotate the canvas to be with some angle in the middle of the start and the end and we set the center to be the X and the Y. Then we draw text. Uh, I'll be removing these ugly manual margins but in the future because I don't really know how to optimize it but I'll find a way in the coming video, uh, don't worry. Now restore the canvas state so the next arc can be drawn peacefully. We are done with the possibility object. Let's go to the view. In the view, I have added a radius, possibility array, a method to set the array and overridden the on measure method to set the radius to the minimum of the width and height also, I added some ugly margin to the actual width and height of the view, which we will change in the coming video. In the on draw, I've replaced the one possibility with the array. Also, I have set the starting values like the start angle, sweep angle, and the radius. I've written a function to get the chosen possibility, which basically checks if the possibility start angle is smaller than or equal to 270 and the start plus sweep is bigger than 27. Let's give our view an ID. Let's set the possibilities and let's give the possibility object a default text size. I'm very lazy to write the text size in every item. Yeah, this looks good. Of course, we will add the ability to customize this wheel, but next time. Let's start animating. I added the variables for animation, the spinning value, aka theta of t, the torque, the friction, aka b, the rotation factor, aka j. Of course, the starting time so I can get the t, which is the input of my function, a handler to schedule the animation and a runnable contains animation logic. Starting time is the time when the wheel starts spinning. You can consider t equals zero. New time is the time spent after the starting. The actual t will be the new time minus starting time. The new value is the result of the equation we solved it before. Now if the difference between the new value and the spinning value is less than 1, it's really boring to continue watching this one trying to reach the 0. So if the new value minus spinning value equals 1 or less, we just stop spinning and resetting the torque to 
2000 and calling spinning done. Speaking of spinning done, it's a higher order function that takes a possibility as a parameter. If the difference is bigger, just redo the spinning by reattaching the runnable to the handler with post delayed. I do it every 10 milliseconds so I don't consume too much resources and also to get a nice smooth animation. I need to add the spinning value to the main start angle so the animation can work. I almost forgot the most important thing, the animation starter, the spin function. I'm putting a spinning value minus 100 so the absolute difference will be a lot more than 1 in the beginning anyway. It's not the most optimal solution, I'm working on it anyway. Let's create a button to start the animation. I'm using it so the more the user touches the button, the more the spinning torque increases. Cool feature, huh? Stop the video, try to understand it, it's quite simple. Now, let's add the on spinning done. Everything is working just fine. Wait for the next video. I'll fix the text issues, add some random colors, accept array of colors, and do some cool stuff. If you like this, hit the like button, subscribe, and also, I don't mind if you follow me on Twitter. That would be nice. Thanks.